Hey guys, welcome to G Whiskey. I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and every once in a while throw on other whiskey related content. Today we're going to go through a list. I'm going to cover my top five coastal whiskeys. So this is going to be a fun one. Stick around. All right, so we'll kick off this video by saying I apologize for my face, which is not how I would usually start a YouTube channel that's normally reserved for when I introduce myself to women. But I have a terrible rash right now. The doctor says it's rosacea. I'm on these pills and hopefully it clears up soon. But uh, for now, it's on my face and you have to look at it. Anyway, it's a list today. I'm covering my top five coastal whiskeys. And I want to start by saying that there are just loads of distilleries in Scotland that happen to be near the coast. And a lot of them have very strong coastal flavors. It's too many to fit into one list. So I want to focus on brands that aren't just near the coast, but offer up very strong coastal flavors. So we're looking for beautiful maritime notes like salt, uh, sea air, fishnets, brine, fish, lobster, whales, Virginia class nuclear powered attack submarines, red lipped batfish, sea cucumbers, shipwrecks, black swallowers, giant squid, regular sized squid, the great Pacific garbage patch, lump suckers, and of course my favorite maritime note in whiskey, Norwal, the unicorns of the deep. Majestic. The five whiskeys I've got for you today are among the coastaliest whiskeys out there. Yes, that's absolutely in the dictionary. No need to look it up. So not necessarily my favorite coastal whiskeys, although many of them are, uh, but I did rank it in order of preference. These all offer what I consider to be some of the best coastal profiles in Scotch. Uh, and for the record, I did not include any Isla whiskeys on this list. And that's because Isla is kind of its own thing, and I didn't want it completely taking over this list, and I also didn't want to exclusively focus on peat. Um, what else? Okay, for this list, I will be giving you distilleries, but I'll also be naming off my go-to bottles from each brand. And finally, before we start this list, I just want to say that this was probably one of the most fun lists for me to put together, and that's because I love coastal whiskey. Uh, I think every enthusiast, even enthusiasts with broad interests who like a little bit of everything, I think every enthusiast out there does have a certain type of whiskey that they're just really partial to. You got the peat monsters, you got the sherry bombers, you got the purists with their refilled bourbon casks, you have people out there who like funky or challenging or dirty whiskeys. I like all of those, but I am a sucker for coastal whiskeys. I love savory umami type elements in my food and whiskey is no different. I love that salty kick. Uh, so yeah, again, fun list. Uh, finally, guys, I do have a mystery pour in my glass as usual, so make sure you stick around till after the list. I'll let you know what that pour is. And that's it. Let's jump into our list. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So let's start with honorable mentions. Initially, I was considering Aaron, but for me, it's not that coastal, even though it is on an island. Occasionally, it does have coastal elements, but it's not very forward. Um, but Lag, the other distillery on the Isle of Arran, which is also owned by Arran, gives us peated stuff, and that one is definitely coastal. I also wasn't sure if I wanted Springbank on this list, but I do want to at least throw it in as an honorable mention. I don't think it's dominated by maritime notes, but they are definitely in there. We also have stuff like Torveg, Rasse, uh, Highland Park a little bit. Um, yeah, there's too many, really. There's too many honorable mentions to mention honorably, but uh, yeah, those are a few. Uh, now let's kick off our proper list. Okay, so at number five, we've got Old Pulteney. Now, Old Pulteney, I think, is still trying to bounce back from the glory days when the 17 and the 21 were still around. We all miss those days, but we have seen a resurgence of interest in the brand recently, and I think it's warranted. It's still very much an interesting and distinctive whiskey. The new line is good. It's not as good, but it is good. And I think my go-to bottle pick from them would be the 15. We've got a touch of sherry in there. Of course, the house profile still shines through and we do have those salty coastal elements. Uh, it's a good whiskey from a good brand. Yes, they do push it sometimes with prices, but overall, really solid stuff and it would need to be included on any list where we're talking about coastal whiskeys. So it comes in at number five, Old Pulteney. Coming in at number four, we've got a legendary whiskey. You all know it. I'm guessing most of you love it. I certainly do, and that's Talisker. Uh, Talisker is a great brand. Yes, some of their prices are a little bit over the top, and by a little bit, I mean a lot. The age stuff, very expensive, although it is beautiful, but regardless of whether it's aged and expensive or 
non-aged or young and cheap, Talisker is always a brand I'm happy to come back to. Another delicious and very distinctive character, we get notes of salt, limestone, and pepper. Really good. Uh, you'd probably guess that my go-to bottle from them would be the 10. It isn't. I feel like the 10 isn't quite as good as it used to be. Still worth checking out and definitely should be a part of anyone's whiskey journey. But I want to recommend the Surge, which initially I feel was priced too high, but at least in my market it has gone down to roughly mid-range pricing, and I do think it's a reasonable price for what you're getting. Currently, it's my favorite Talisker that's not absurdly expensive, so one worth checking out as long as you're not being overcharged. But regardless of what Talisker you buy, whether it's a pricey older one, whether it's a mid-range one, or whether it's entry-level, Talisker always gives you that beautiful coastal profile, so it's definitely a brand that deserves to be on this list. Comes in at number four. Coming in at number three, we've got Tobermory on the Isle of Mull. Uh, they're most famous for their peated line, which goes by Lechik, and I absolutely love Lechik. Uh, Lechik has something for everyone. It's peated for the peat heads, it's funky for the funk heads, and it's coastal for the coast heads. Fucking what? I like anything and everything from Lechik. Tobermory, more of a mixed bag, but with Lechik in particular, we definitely get plenty of those salty coastal elements in there. They may not be dominant, but they are apparent. As for my go-to bottle, uh, take your pick. Could be the 10, could be the 18. They have some great special releases. Let's just stick with the 10, though, because it's the most budget-friendly. Great whiskey from a great brand. Um, so coming in at number three, Tobermory, more specifically Lechik. So number two and number one were tough. I couldn't really decide what to put where, but this is a ranking list and God damn it, you're getting a ranking, but just know that these two are pretty much interchangeable. Regardless, what I landed on for number two was Ardnamurkin. I'm sure some of you out there might be tired of hearing about this brand, but unfortunately for you, I'm not tired of talking about it. Uh, very hyped whiskey, but it is well-deserved. Western Highlands brand, I absolutely love these guys and they definitely do have a coastal appeal. These whiskeys are young, although you wouldn't know it most of the time. Uh, they have a beautiful oily texture. They're often gently peated. And of course, we have those wonderful maritime notes. Uh, my go-to bottle from them would probably just be the classic AD release, which is fantastic. It's a great whiskey. The brand is fantastic as well. Comes in at number two, Ardner Market. All right, so my number one pick is a whiskey that's right up there with Arden American as one of my favorite whiskey brands and my favorite whiskey profiles, and that's Oban. Uh, Oban is a brand that's not gonna be for everyone, but for me, there's nothing quite like it. I do consider it to be one of the, no, probably the ultimate coastal whiskey, and that's exactly why I love it. It's salty, it's coastal, often subtle, often complex. Uh, the 14, in my opinion, is a great whiskey, although it is, Overpriced in some markets, luckily not in my market, but my go-to bottle from them is a little bit on the pricier side. As far as I'm concerned, it's worth it. I go for the special releases. Open's parent company, Diageo, puts out special releases every year, and they're often quite pricey, so I do have a kind of complicated relationship with them, but the Open special releases in particular are the ones that I always seek out, and I always end up dishing out on them. I really enjoyed the 2021, I really enjoyed the 2022, for me, worth every penny. I've yet to try the 2023, but I absolutely will buy it and I will review it when I can find it. Um, but short of those, uh, the 14, also a great whiskey. Doesn't really matter what Oban you get, it will give you a very strong, very coastal personality and as I said, it's one of my favorite brands. So coming in at number one, Oban. All right, so that was the list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep in mind, of course, this is opinion, and of course, I want to hear from you. Let me know what I missed out on. I'm sure there are plenty. Let me know how you would rank the ones I did include. Looking forward to reading your comments. Finally, if you stuck around to find out what the mystery pour is, I've got... Kill Karen Heavily Peated. As the name suggests, it's from Kill Karen, and it's heavily peated. This is from the Glen Guile Distillery, which is right next to Springbank, which is right near the coast, the inward inner coast of the Campbelltown Peninsula. Uh, and if you like punchy, cast strength, peated whiskey with a coastal kick, this is one worth checking out. And I guess that's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, subscribe. Always appreciated. And of course, I want to hear from you. Not only can you share your thoughts on this video and this list, you can also let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.